I would like to welcome our Chief Administrative Officer, Senior Vice President of JTA, Cleveland Ferguson, to the stage. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Director Buckland, and thank you all uh, for being here. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the U2C Public-Private Partnership possibilities as we see it uh, at uh, the JTA. Uh, and when we consider the uh, direction and the uh, purpose of, uh, uh, when we consider the connection and purpose of uh, what a public uh, entity is to provide on behalf of the taxpayers uh, and the leadership of our CEO, Mr. Ford, uh, and the board, the Procurement Contracts and Inventory Department is tightly knit around appropriate processes uh, and procedures. Each month we communicate through an interactive technological portal uh, to communicate to plan holders what the opportunities are for the JTA. Last year, uh, over 75 contracts, $60 million, over 100 years of experience uh, in our procurement department. We have a strong, robust, small business, uh, disadvantaged business program uh, that we are intentional about including uh, in all of our procurements. All of that information is transmitted to the board on a monthly basis up to purchase orders of $25,000 or more so that we are transparent, deliberate, and focused. By the time we get to our procurement review committee, we have a, a well-supported uh, set of recommendations that then go to the board, that then go to the CEO for execution, and then the citizens and visitors of this community uh, receive the benefit of professional services uh, and products uh, as a result of our participation with the vendor community. We are so efficient that the sister agencies in the state of Florida ha have uh, asked us to be the administrator of the statewide bus procurement contract, which we will be doing over the next five years. So we have planned for this. The board has prepared us for this. The CEO has directed us uh, to ensure that we have the capacity to not only manage uh, the business uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, but along with our consulting partners, we are prepared uh, for this uh, procurement and the opportunity to work with you uh, in this particular space. Why a public-private partnership process? Certainly, it provides for accelerated project delivery. It is a more efficient way for us to deliver our services and allocate uh, the risk uh, and responsibility to those who are in the best position to manage those risks between the public sector uh, and the private sector. Uh, and it really encourages us to have a long-term strategic uh, thought process around our signature projects. And so taking advantage of the cost effectiveness, the efficiency of allocating those risks uh, and being able to give you, uh, as the private sector, access to patient money uh, because we are a governmental entity that has the ability uh, to apply for those dollars, thereby allows us to balance the financing and potentially the funding uh, as uh, a joint partner. In 2013, we had the success of uh, our own public-private partnership, and those uh, who are in this space will certainly be able to tell you, if you've seen one P3, you've seen one P3, right? They're all different. Uh, but in this particular case, the JTA thought about building its own compressed natural gas uh, facility uh, and thought about what it would mean to engage the private sector to do this instead and ultimately decided that it was better for us uh, to have this public-private partnership to be the compressed natural gas provider uh, both for private uh, and public uh, sources as we transition pursuant to the board direction to a more uh, environmentally sustainable uh, fleet. Uh, and so as we ramped up our bus rapid transit uh, program, which is the largest in the southeast, uh, we uh, facilitated that through compressed natural gas uh, uh, buses. Uh, and so we've already been thinking, we already have the experience uh, to be able to appreciate uh, the benefits of uh, a public-private uh, partnership. 
Uh, and so you see here the design, build, finance, operate, ma maintain matrix, uh, which is the hallmark of any procurement process. Uh, we've certainly identified the need through the Skyway Advisory Group that uh, Director Buckland uh, talked about along with other stakeholders that ultimately generated the community conversation uh, and recommendation to the board and the board ultimately supported that we needed to modernize and expand uh, the, and keep uh, the uh, Skyway system which is why uh, you all are all here today. But there are certainly many variations of the design, build, finance, operate, maintain uh, and uh, we uh, certainly uh, want to enjoy through the breakout sessions your feedback on how we might be able to achieve that. As Bernard articulated, the Bay Street Innovation Corridor process is approximately 30% designed. The overall ultimate urban circulator project is about 10% designed. And so we are at a place uh, where we believe that the private sector needs to step in uh, and assist us uh, the rest of the way because you are the subject matter experts in terms of the technology, the infrastructure, et cetera, uh, to help uh, partner with us to take it uh, the rest of, of the way. Uh, and so the board and the CEO have prepared the JTA for this day. We have in our procurement rule two a public-private partnership which emphasizes collaboration between the public sector and the private sector, that you are a partner with the JTA as members of the private sector. As a state agent, agency of the state and an independent special district, we have an enabling statute that declares that we are to engage, we have the authority to engage with consortia, with par private entities in the building operation from everything from transportation facilities to transportation services. So we are uniquely poised to uh, take advantage of this opportunity uh, in the very best way. It is specifically called out in our procurement rules, public-private partnerships uh, is a preferred uh, procurement method. So we've done all of the appropriate legwork uh, to get us to this point. Again, you participated in 1P3, you've seen 1P3. But there is a general formula that uh, allows for a, a level of interaction and predictability uh, for the private sector to be able to understand where uh, their public partner uh, happens to be. Uh, and what we want to focus on with this particular day is we don't necessarily know if it's going to be design, build, operate, maintain. We don't know if it's going to be design, build, finance, operate, maintain. It can be any combination. We need your feedback as the industry to help give us insights that uh, help us appreciate what your risk tolerance is, uh, where your partnership is. That will then allow us to engage, uh, particularly our federal regulators or our state regulators, uh, with respect to the kind of patient money we might be able to partner with uh, to help move the project along whether it's the uh, private investment uh, pr uh, procedures program or the transportation infrastructure, uh, finance and innovation act, TIFIA dollars or SIB loans uh, from uh, the state. Our value to you is the ability to be able to produce uh, access to financing uh, structures that uh, might be able to, to uh, entice you to move forward in a particular direction. As was mentioned with respect to the transit-oriented development, transit supportive urbanism uh, project, we can also be a joint venture uh, or a joint developer with you. And to the extent that your idea about how to connect this project to transportation infrastructure may allow us to have access to federal grants such as uh, new starts or small starts. Uh, the FTA uh, promulgated uh, a change to its joint use rule uh, this past year, uh, which is now finalized, which encourages these types of partnerships. So again, your feedback in these breakout sessions uh, and in your one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, meetings tomorrow will be invaluable to help us determine, again, uh, in terms of our recommendation uh, to the board, design, build, operate, maintain, design, build, finance, operate, maintain, or any combination uh, of, that, uh, of that process. So right now, we are at the industry forum. We are at the stage where uh, we've put out an RFI, RFI 
Uh, approximately 26 of you uh, have responded. Uh, we are engaged in giving you as transparently as we can be uh, what the potential options are. We're looking for you to identify potential partners, uh, whether you think uh, that uh, the transit-oriented development approach might work for you, you might partner with a developer firm uh, to be able to leverage that piece, or, or we might determine that uh, based upon our holdings, that those funds from those TOD, TSU projects will be part of the availability payment for your operating and maintaining approach uh, of your particular proposal. So take advantage of today. Take advantage of those breakout sessions. Give us that feedback so that we can put this RFP in the very best position of success as a partner uh, with uh, the JTA. So uh, as I say, uh, certainly the JTA has uh, funding available. Uh, certainly with our current operations uh, of the Skyway, uh, those funds uh, can be available. We also have access to other funds uh, such as uh, what's uh, represented here. And I've talked about uh, not only uh, you know, the, the financing uh, opportunities that may be available uh, at the federal level, we have a great partner uh, in uh, FDOT. Uh, and and uh, uh, there may be uh, funds available uh, from that perspective uh, to help, again, patiently finance uh, to get to a particular point. You've heard Bernard talk about uh, the BUILD grant uh, and the fact that the Bay Street Innovation Corridor project uh, is advanced approximately 30%. Uh, but again, this joint use joint development opportunity. Our statute also gives us the ability to form public benefit corporations, which again might help you minimize uh, risk uh, in terms of, of taking on pieces of this project. We really want your feedback uh, to help us understand uh, where uh, that line uh, can certainly uh, be, uh, and then certainly taking down uh, these parcels uh, with respect to transit-oriented development where, where that so much is available. Uh, but don't forget about uh, those interconnections that are near the U2C 10, 10 and a half mile system that may not be uh, in public hands that nevertheless uh, might uh, provide some opportunity for us to pursue uh, some federal, uh, federal support. With respect to the three parcels uh, that were mentioned, uh, these are in adjacent and, and absolute proximity uh, to uh, the U2C station, uh, but we have a multitude of other parcels. Uh, with respect to our O&M Center, the Operations and Ma uh, Maintenance Center of the Skyway, uh, there is uh, some availability. And so to the extent that, again, you think of us uh, not only you know, as, uh, as a public uh, entity doing sort of operations and, and maintenance, but you could also potentially participate, uh, again, with this joint use, uh, joint venture approach, uh, which would give you uh, you know, access to, to move the project forward. So, for those of you who are already thinking about uh, your uh, consortium partners, uh, we really uh, want to encourage you to take advantage of another area of our uh, enabling uh, legislation, uh, and that is that we have the ability to receive unsolicited proposals. Earlier this, uh, this fiscal year, uh, we did get an unsolicited proposal that was just too narrow in its scope, and so uh, it did help frame uh, the fact that we needed to have this industry forum to communicate uh, to the whole industry uh, that we're really looking for uh, you know, a consortium to not merely do just a portion of it, but really consider uh, taking down the whole uh, project uh, with a series of partners. And so if you're game, if you believe that you understand the scope of what it is that we're trying to do, then you have the ability through the unsolicited proposals process to develop that scope, follow the federal and state guidelines associated with that, and we can be off and running with the procurement 60-day uh, uh, procurement right now. Uh, and, uh, and we're serious about that. And so we are built uh, to be able to handle that process along with our technical experts uh, to help guide us, uh, and we, we can move forward. If you're not quite there, uh, this forum is again designed, the breakout sessions are designed for you to give us uh, the feedback and, and help us understand what it is that we need to include to, and to craft 
an appropriate uh, RFP uh, that has all of the pieces uh, that helps, uh, again, make this a successful project. And so Bernard articulated that we're at approximately 30% uh, on the Bay Street Innovation uh, Corridor, and so this is a three-year snapshot. We're at the industry forum today. We anticipate having a draft RFP as a result of the feedback uh, that you give us uh, around uh, April 30th that will then give the industry another opportunity uh, to give us uh, a bit more feedback. But we fully expect by the uh, winter of uh, this year that the uh, responses will be due. We pledge to have uh, a decision made three months thereafter in March of 2021. Uh, and a contract executed in the summer of 2021. Our expectation is that the Bay Street Innovation uh, Corridor portion will begin revenue service in 2023. And so again, as you uh, participate, uh, give us uh, an additional feedback uh, along those points in time, uh, the timeline will continue uh, to be uh, fleshed out uh, accordingly. And so we're very excited uh, about uh, your being here uh, to help uh, us uh, further drill down on some of the concepts that uh, Bernard and I have talked about. Uh, we are delighted to have a panel of, of experts uh, to um, engage in conversation. That conversation will be led by the JTA Vice Chair of the Board of Directors and Chair of the Long Range Planning System Development Committee, Ari Jolly. <laughs>